somehow I got over. Praise the Lord. I want to greet you in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Thank you for all those on Facebook Live and Trinity Baptist Prayer Line. We pray that the Lord add a blessing to the hearing of His Word today. Um, I just want to thank God for this message series that He has given us. I have learned a ton from what the Lord has delivered us. Today we would like to conclude our series on Know Who You Are. I hope you have been enjoying that. So what we'll do, we'll get started with our reading this morning. It will be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 to 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21. And it reads this way. It says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Get this. Not imputing their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in God's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And last verse, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Let's pray. Our Father, is once again that we come in the mighty, precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to hear a word from you today. My prayer always is that I decrease and you increase. I pray they not see the messenger, but they see the message. For it is in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said, the title today is No who you are. We're going to look at three things today. It's going to be God wants us to know that we are an ambassador for Christ Jesus. The next thing is God wants us to know that we are light. And finally, oh yes, and finally, God wants us to know that we are a survivor. So let's just take it up with the reading that we just read. You know, we've been talking about knowing who you are. Why is that important? If you do not know who you are, you cannot operate in the things that God wants you to operate in. Satan wants you to be defeated, but God wants you to be a victor. You know, as we've been saying that someone said this, it is not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. Man, it's all begin in the mind. Who do you think that you are? Man. So as we read this part here, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 21, we see that God is giving us a great title here. Verse 20 says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Wow, what is an ambassador? Well, that's a nice thing to be an ambassador. We see it all going around the world, these ambassadors, you know, for another country. But you are an ambassador for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. An ambassador is a high-ranking official, a representative from a foreign country. See, this, this is not even our home. We're from a foreign place. We are representing Christ while we're here. Who are you representing? Are you representing the world or are you representing Christ? You know, you could really nail down ambassador to a preacher because he is going to proclaim the goodness 
of the Lord. And that's what an ambassador does. And then God gives this ambassador some things to do. I want you to think about this. You know, the Bible tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this ambassador is going to proclaim the word of God wherever he go. See, this is what Christians need to understand. Wherever you go, when you claim the name of Jesus, you are a representative of him. Now, so when you're out in places, you got to really watch what you're doing. Are you losing your temper? Are you talking bad about somebody? People are watching you because you represent Christ if you name the name of Christ. And then God gives this ambassador something special. Look at verse 18. It says, And all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and get this and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation I run into so many people talking about they don't know what their ministry is in the Lord what the Lord want them to do what are you talking about right here he has given every believer the ministry of reconciliation now, what is this reconciliation? This reconciliation is a coming back unto God. As you understand that in the garden, when sin has taken place, our fellowship was broken with God. But then God had already prepared His Son to come back and mend that and reconcile us unto him. Matter of fact, verse 19 says this. Look at verse 19. It says, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Man. So God was in Christ reconciling the world, telling them to come unto him. He was in Christ. Now get this. If God was in Christ and Christ is in us, what do you think is happening? Reconciling the world unto himself. Verse 19 goes on to say, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Not beating them up with their sin. We know that their sin. The Bible says for all, including yourself, have sinned and come short to the glory of God. So God has given, given us a personal ministry. What is your ministry? Are you trying to reconcile people to God? Or are you still breaking a wedge in there and drawing them apart from God by the way that you're living? Because you're representing Him. You're calling yourself a Christian, but you're doing everything that the world is doing, and they see no difference. You are not reconciling them to God. You are pushing them further away into the world. But the good news is that God has given us a ministry. I don't know about you, but it's so good to have a ministry when you know that you're working for the Lord. So he's given us this ministry. Then he goes on in verse 19. Look at what else he gives us. It says, Not putting their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So now he has given us a ministry. Now he has equipped us with his word of reconciliation. I don't know about you, but when you hear God's word, when you hear those words that I'm a sinner, but Christ commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. And he's saying that if we just simply come to him, he will forgive us of all our sins. I like the scripture where it says, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That's the word of reconciliation that we're taking with our ministry of reconciliation as an ambassador. Do you know who you are? You are a high-ranking official from a foreign land, and you represent the king. Are you operating in your position? Know 
who you are. Satan wants you to think that you are a defeated foe and you can't do anything. But God is letting you know that you are in the place where he wants you to be when you're operating for who you are. This is why it's so important to know who you are. We're going to continue. So the first one was an ambassador. I love that one. Woo, boy, that's, you should be excited about that. Because some people think they don't, they're nothing. But look what God is calling you an ambassador. Wow. Now the next thing, i got to go on. I'll stay there because I love it. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Let's take a look at this next thing that God wants us to know who we are. Matthew 5, 14, 16 reads this way. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but under a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Wow. Jesus is calling you the light of the world. Man, I tell you. We need light. I don't know about you. i got some light on me right now so you, you can see me. Light is so important. The sun gives us light. The Bible says the, His word is light unto our feet so that we can watch where we're going. Light is important. Light guides. It exposes some things. So if you're a Christian, you're supposed to be shining bright when men and women may see your good works. And glorify your Father. Now let me tell you something. As light, there comes a great responsibility. Whenever God has given us wisdom, knowledge, and opened our eyes to something, others around us may not understand. So whenever we as children of God are going to a lost and dying and dark world, and we tell them about the goodness of Christ exposing their sin, it causes trouble. I want you to think about this scenario. If you were sitting in a dark room for a couple hours and then the light goes on, you immediately will quench your eyes and say, probably say some bad words. Cut that light off. See, they want the light off. They want to stay in darkness. And that's what happens with the world today. Whenever we are the light of the world, we are coming to them. They do not want to hear what God's word says because it exposes their sin. And man, I'm telling you, when that sin is exposed... It requires a response. It requires a change to take place. But if you're light of the world, you cannot be hid. Verse 14 says it. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You are not going to be hid if you're shining for the Lord. People will see it. And they will gravitate to you. I always think about the little bugs. If you ever cut the light on, I know I cut my light on back here, and those bugs just gravitate to the light. And that's what God wants us to be. If we're shining, the people of the world should gravitate so they can hear God's word. Now, verse 15, say that this light of the world giveth unto all. You're not just supposed to go to the church, folks. You're supposed to go to the world. This is what happens. So many Christians don't go out. They're so self-absorbed with their little groups and not going out into the world. God says He giveth light unto all that are in the house. We need to make sure that we are giving light unto the world. And then if we're giving light unto the world... That means we are shining. And look what verse 16 says. Matthew 5, 16. It says, Let your light so shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When you are operating in who you are, light of the world, you will be glorifying God. 
you will be living your life in a way that people will see something is different about you. And then as the scripture says here, they'll see your good works and they'll glorify the Father. They'll say, hey, I know God has changed them. They used to be like this and they're not like that anymore. There was a change in their life. The question is, can you make that statement that there was a change in your life? If there is no change, you are yet within your sin and the wrath of God is abiding upon you. Are you the light of the world? Or are you sitting under a bushel? Are you sitting under a lampshade and hiding your light when God wants you to shine? Are you shining? Are you the light of the world? What a major thing that God tells us that we are the light of the world. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about, and boy, I tell you, is that we're not only an ambassador, we're not only the light of the world, we are also a survivor. Let's look at what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. I want you to get there. I'm going to grab a swig here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. And we're almost done. We're not going to take long today. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, suffering, charity, and patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconum, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but get this part, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I want you to know right there, that's what I was saying. If you are living like God says, you will suffer persecution. The world do not like God, Jesus. What did they, the world do to Jesus? They killed him, but thank God he rose the third day. And if we are following him, they will persecute us. So when I hear a lot of Christians say they're not being persecuted, well, that means they're not talking. That means they're not shining. That means they're in a corner and they're whimpering and they're not being out like God says. He says a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. God wants us out in front and shining and pointing men and women and boys and girls to him. And when you do that, that goes against the mainstream of the world. And the world will not like it. But the good news is Jesus told us we'll be persecuted so it doesn't take us by surprise. You know, whenever you're telling someone the truth, it hurts. Just like I say when that light goes on. I like what Galatians chapter 4 verse 16 says. Galatians chapter 4 verse 16 says this. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Man, I'm telling you, have you ever been presented with telling someone the truth? I mean, I'm telling you the truth. The Bible doesn't say the truth doesn't hurt. The Bible said the truth shall make you free. There might be some pain associated with that truth, but it will make you free. It breaks the bound of sin and it releases you. And it's just like when a baby is being birthed into the world, there's great pain involved, but the life comes into the world. God wants us to be truthful. And he wants us to know that we are a survivor. I like what Paul says here. He says, verse 11, he says, persecutions, afflictions, that means stuff put on them, which came to me at Iconum, 
and Lystra and what persecutions I endured. You know what? Are you enduring or are you complaining? You know, Christian, listen to me and listen to me well. Whenever you're going through something, don't be complaining because if God has not moved it, He could be using that situation to move you. God is using everything to form us in the image of His Son. He wants us to do like Jesus when Jesus was going to the cross in the garden. And He said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus knew that He was going to die. He knew that the wrath of God would be poured upon Him. And as He understood that, and actually the moment was coming, the Bible tells us He drops sweats of blood and agony but as he went to the cross he said nevertheless not my will but thy will be done can you be there Jesus knew that he was going to die but yet he also knew that he would rise again I don't know about you but I had some persecutions some afflictions like Paul says I just want to thank God for all that he's done I've been through the death of a parent a death of a brother a death of a sister my wife miscarrying our child I've been through cancer but as like I lost a job and many other things I could go on and on but out of them all, God delivered me. I am a survivor. God said that we are a survivor. He did not say it would be easy. Matter of fact, He told you it would be tough. But He said, I'll never leave thee, nor forsake thee. He wants you to hang in there. We walk by faith and not by sight. We must have the mentality that we're going to trust God no matter what. We must know who we are. And in this scripture here, Paul lets us know that out of them all, the Lord delivered him. And I can stand with Paul and say, the Lord has delivered me from many things. But you know, there is an ultimate deliverance when Jesus Christ comes. And if you think about what's going on in the world, the unrest that's in the world right now, we are in some times that are amazing. Listening to, look, reading the Bible, we are in times that it talks about where no one knows the answer. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the answer. If you are not with Christ today, you need to look at the things that are going on. Man does not have the answer. Only God has the answer. You must recognize that you are a sinner and that you cannot save yourself. The first step is recognizing who you are. And that first step, God tells us that we're all, we for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then number two, you need to recognize that... You, you can't save yourself. If you could, there would be no purpose for God to send His Son. He said, but God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But the good news is, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. God has given you a gift and that's His Son and you simply have to receive it. And you receive it by um, coming to Him and be, repenting of your sin, being sorrowful for your sin, and asking Him to come into your heart. Now all of that, people talk about different stages, but I believe it's all together. When you're coming to Him, it's just like the thief on the cross. He recognized that He deserved to be there. Then He recognized that Jesus Christ was going to live again. He said, Remember me when thou enter into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. He didn't have time to get baptized. He didn't have time to do any good works. He simply recognized that He was a sinner. And He believed with all his heart that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that he was going to live again. That's what it takes to be saved, simply put. So if you would like to do that today, 
Repeat this prayer, but remember the prayer that the Savior is believing in your heart. The Bible says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth salvation um, is, um, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you would, bow your heads now and say this prayer if you haven't received Jesus before. Say, dear God, I come now confessing I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry for my sins. I believe Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day rose in payment for my sin. I ask him now to come into my heart and save me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you've done that, we would love to hear from you. Please go to minutesoftruth.org and leave a comment. Even, you know, just leave a comment. We'll love to see that we're getting some feedback there. But the most important thing is to know who you are. Today was an ambassador, a life, and praise God, a survivor. Know who you are.